One night only, one night only. <laughs> y'all made such a mess. Y'all, what's up? It is your girl, Gigi. Welcome back to my channel. Appreciate you for tuning in. I know I'm coming to you a little bit late with this review of Escape, you guys. Um, But I had not a chance to watch it, but now we catching up, okay? So let's not even waste no time because it is a lot of mess. Tamika, Tasha, Tasha, Mama, Rocky, all three of y'all, garbage trash throw it away are we finished is are we through because that y'all some mother because i tell you like people like that having that in your life will just tap just just tap on that that nerve where it's like god i know you're trying to test me to know that i'm i'm worth i'm walking in the light you know walking in the right path of righteousness but sometimes it's like you gotta let people know i'm a christian but bitch i got hands <laughs> you know who <laughs> Keep to me if you want to, okay? Mama included. Now, T Tamika, I know you ain't gonna throw hands with your mama, but I would have been verbally sparring, point blank, period. Um, but yeah, you guys, I appreciate y'all for tuning in, being patient, all of you guys. Um, I just, you know, just appreciate y'all for uh, obviously showing supports, but let's just keep going and get into the review, okay? So we open up with Taj. Y'all, I love Taj. You know Taj is a good person because everybody talks about how they have a good relationship with Taj. You just tell that she is a genuine soul, spirit, and really is just like a positive person and a good influence to keep around. So she meets Tasha at the African American Music Museum, I think it was, which was super cool to see. But she's just trying to show Tasha, like, look, girl, like, look what y'all have done. This is what you're really, like, a part of, and you trying to throw that all away? And for what? So your nigga can have some money? Because that's really what it is. Rocky's been throwing Tasha down this path. Because at the end of the day, we know he's her manager. However many percent he done ripped up off of her. 10, 15, 20 percent. Who knows? But she sits down with Tasha and was like, look, girl. Okay, we got to figure out what we're doing. Because um, we're about to, we're trying to figure out, like, to, how to work with you guys. But the last time I seen you, it was not good with your sister. And see, Tasha does this shit again where she starts deflecting because we're talking, I'm sitting there asking about, okay, what's going on with you and your sister? And you want to put it on, well, you know, it's got to do with my mama. Like, cause she disrespected my mama. And she's doing that thing. I, I mentioned last time on review where it's like this type of exclusion that the mama and Tasha keep doing where it's like, Oh, disrespecting my mama. And when the mama talks to Tasha, how you gonna talk to my daughter like that? Like, bitch, like, I'm not your daughter too? Like, they both, it's clear that they want to, to make it to feel like an outsider. Uh, especially when she doesn't do what they want her to do. It's the mind control. I got mind control of a Debo, okay? And at this point, she said, I'm done. No more mind control. Unplug, okay? Um, but, uh, she gets into that and Tamika, uh, Tasha's just with the, oh yeah, she disrespected my mama. And I love how Taj was like, no, it's something else. Like it's between you and your sister. But Tasha cannot address her issues with Tamika because at the end of the day, she know a part of the issue that she has for her sister is the fact that you stole that woman money. You know it, Tasha. You know you stole that woman money. And Tamika said, mama, you know they stole my money, okay? You know you took that woman money. Not only that, you know your nigga got the, the, your sister money. And the fact that it's the, just the way how my man, my man, my man, some women just allow their men to cause them to go down the wrong road, wrong road. You literally betrayed your sister. Why is my money being deposited into your man's account is the question. All right, y'all. Sorry, I'm back. Um... But yeah, so Taj is asking Tasha, well, you know, what does this mean for the future of you and SWV? Um, Because, like, if y'all can't resolve this, like, how are we going to try to all get together and do this, you know, for the culture? And now Tasha's hitting her with the, well, you know, I'm shopping around, you know, because I just, I just want to be free. I just, free falling. That's what you have to be doing, Tasha. You about to be out there free falling because... Rocky ain't got no parachute for you and you're trying to use escape as a parachute and honestly it's all effed up 
but she wants to shop around get it go be solo tasha you had so much time to be solo why haven't you done it but you're waiting until now <laughs> on candy's platform your arch nemesis to try to do it girl tasha we we see you <laughs> We see you, boo-boo. We see you. And you're not doing a good job of hiding it. And everybody's picked up on your MO. I want to do something. I want to go solo. So now I'm picking fights with everybody. Now I'm creating discord. Now I'm creating, you know, all of these imaginary issues. And then when somebody asks, do we got an issue? Oh, we don't got an issue, but we keep sweeping it under the rug and nobody wants to address it. But last episode, when they were trying to address it with you, now all of a sudden it's, I got to leave until I talk to Tamika. She creates these problems and then she basically just juggles all of them. Like, I got a problem with each of, for between Tamika and Candy. So when it's time for me to talk to Candy, I'm going to bring up Tamika. When it's time for me to talk about Tamika, I'm going to bring up Candy. And I'm just going to go back and forth and juggle it and basically avoid all, you know, true conflict that needs to happen in order for there to be a resolution. Um, so moving on, we see Coco. She goes to see her friends, you know, catch up with them. And I love the fact that Coco was very vulnerable about her diagnosis of uh, bipolar depression. Um, I have been a witness, you know, to people who battle their mental health. I have somebody in my family currently right now who's diagnosed with BP. Um, and it's hard. Like, it's really hard because you kind of go through a moment of witnessing them go up and down. And especially when there's not a diagnosis you're like, what is going on? Like there for a long time, I'm being vulnerable right now for a long time. You know, I dealt with witnessing my family member, um, just not be like, you, you could just tell something was off. And for years it was just like, what is going on? And I personally knew what it was, but my hard headed ass daddy, he was just another one of these. Oh, you know, go talk to the pastor. Oh, you know, it's just, you know, it's just a phase of acting out. Let's do this and this. Like, and I'm like, no, like they need to go talk to somebody. They need to go and really like get checked out. And for years we struggled until finally it was just so bad that it was like, no, like there's nothing. Like we literally went through all other, all other avenues besides this main one. And it sucked because in the meantime, you know, we're dealing with the outburst because at BP, when the manic episodes happen, they're lashing out at everybody around them. And I'm sure that had a lot to do with Coco, you know, and her relationship with SWV. Um, obviously, there's different types of, uh, you know, BPDs or just BP in general. But nonetheless, um, I appreciate Coco for being vulnerable in that regards. Um, <laughs> but her friends, you know, they just start talking about, you know, touring and everything like that. And her friends like, girl, cause you know, y'all get old, you know, y'all, y'all get older, y'all a little more mature. She said, what? <laughs> girl, don't talk to me about getting older and mature because this puss <laughs> still Aquafina, okay? She said, this puss is still water, wet like water. Sweet puss is Saturday. Shout out to Plies, okay? She, she said, sweet puss is Saturday over here. Heard a question, Coco, if you still get wet down there, okay? Who knocking it out then? Who, who, who's your boy toy? Who, who is it? Okay. Who's getting called over when your son, you know, go out with his friends? So who, who is the caller gentleman that's being able to, you know, take a sip of the water that you say is running well down from the cooch and below? <laughs> uh, Cause everybody knows you still got to get that bike blown out. Okay. Even when you are older and mature. Okay. Women, that's when we get... They, you know, they say statistically, scientifically, women get more in their sexual prowess the older they get, okay? <laughs> Coco, who's knocking, the, who knocking the pussy out the frame? What I'm trying to know, who knocked the dust off that pussy? Okay, shout out to Smokey. Uh, but moving on. Um, finally, Tamika, the mama, sit down. <sighs> Tamika opened the door and they just look at each other. It was like a scene from The Help or something. They just look and she's like, come in. So I cook, you know, I cook for you, your favorite meal. And it was just sad because even as adults, all of us as adults at the end of the day are just big ass kids. When you go through your healing process, everybody is their inner child, point blank period. 
you just live your life as a big ass child like yeah we're adults but we're just big ass kids because we navigate the world as our inner child and watching Tamika try to explain to her mom like damn you're not hearing me when I say I feel neglected by you I don't feel heard by you I don't feel like you're fighting for me the way you fight for Tasha and the way the mama tried to, what's really going on? Because it ain't about, it ain't about the money that Tasha's, well, now what's really going on between you and your sister? Like, hell, for you know what's really going on. And she's like, mama, like, I am watching you, like, I just really wish you would fight for me the way you fight for them. Like, and every time, you know, it comes to what I'm telling you, it's like, you're not hearing me when I say, like, you always want to hear Tasha out, but you never want to hear me out. And then the mama's like, well, I hear Tasha out because she's not disrespectful, you know? And at the end of the day, I've noticed a lot of parents, y'all don't want to admit that you will consider what the child is saying disrespect when you don't like what they're saying, point blank period. When you don't want to accept or you don't like what they're saying, always disrespect because you don't want to hear it. And a lot of times kids are sometimes telling the truth and are some, sometimes saying very valid points. But parents in their authoritative, you know, ego is going to really internalize how dare this child of mine correct me almost in a way. How dare this child of mine, oh, they feel like you're not going to put me in my place type shit. And it's like, it's not even about that. Like me being an aunt, I'm me, my brother... We talk to my mom, like, as obviously as grandma, too, like, my niece and nephew, and, hi, hi. alright, y'all, I'm back, sorry, um, my niece, she woke up, <laughs> I'm all auntie doo, doo okay, kids, um, but speaking of, like, getting back to what I was saying, you know, in raising kids, you know, it's just so different, and how I'm, you know, I'm re trying to relate to my niece and nephew in ways that my mom didn't try to relate to me, and I feel so much for Tamika and it's honestly triggering because I know what it feels like to almost not feel loved in a way by your mom or to know that your mom has resentment and anger and she's taking it out on you and ultimately that's what we figured out to be happening and it did take a genius to know there was something else that was tap dancing on the mama's nerve to why she was treating Tamika like that and the minute she said, I am the fifth member. I am the one who put the microphone in your hand. And even when your daddy left us stranded for dead, I was like, <laughs> well, <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> That's what we were looking for. And all I could think was, Iyanla, can you come out of retirement? I, Iyanla, you know what I want to happen? I want Iyanla to go to these celebrity families and start to get into work, okay? Those are good episodes. I need y'all to come out of retirement quick, ASAP, expeditiously. Because that family need it. And that mama need a reality check and needs some, and she needs somebody in her face to be like, not on my watch, okay? Because the mama be spitting out motherfucking delusions, okay? And she really is always deflecting like Tasha when Tamika's like, talk about me me and she never can she never can address Tamika for her feelings her experiences she's always talking about well you know your sister feel bad you know if, and then she always pulls out well you can sleep that night and she did that in a voicemail well uh, uh that ain't no god in you you know if you can go to bed at night with yourself and it's like me if I can go to bed at night they stole my money but if I can sleep at night, really? And y'all want to sit there talking about, oh, we family, we sisters and all that type of stuff. Just like in soul food. Fuck family. Family, my husband. <laughs> That's where Tamika's at at this point. And so even though the mama yelling at her and Tamika's sitting there like this, and you can tell she's just like, I'm not trying to disrespect my mama again. I don't want to do that. That's what she's at. I'm going to apologize. Even though I don't think she disrespected the mama. She might have raised her voice and she can she can be like, you know what, mama, I apologize for raising my voice. But overall, what she said was not disrespectful. It was the all out truth. And the only reason mama's taking as disrespect is because it was the truth. And she didn't want it to get out about her precious little daughter 
about how she over there so godly and whatnot. But didn't the Lord say thou shalt not steal? <laughs> I know that's one of the uh, Ten Commandments, thou shalt not steal. Okay? But you over there worth her $30,000. Did you buy a car with it? Did you pay behind bills with it? Or did Rocky take it and pay for that mistress over there that's coming out talking about how she got a baby by your nigga? Or was that hush money? Was that Rocky's hush money? Is he paying child support with that $30,000 obviously owed to, you know, Barbara over there? I mean, Shirley over there that's cheating with, with Tasha and her man, her man, her man, her man. But watching that, it what I really feel for Tamika because she said, you've been doing this all my life. And like, when somebody said that, like, she's like, I've been feeling this way all my life. Like, I felt that. And me and my mom had to do the same thing. Like, it's triggering because we had to have to come to pass. And I get, it's hard to say, like, for me and, you know, watching, I'm glad to see a parent-child dynamic that's offering us uh, uh, the ability to have a conversation like this because we always see the relationship dynamics, but we very rarely see parent-child dynamics. And a lot more people are starting to talk about how a lot of you parents really are fucked up in y'all's ways and how y'all raised us and how every time a child talks about how they had a negative experience, y'all want to come back with the, I'm sorry, I wasn't the perfect parent. Nobody's telling you to be a perfect parent. But one thing I had to tell my mom, Although I know that you did your best and you did the best with the knowledge that you had, it still doesn't change the fact that, yes, I'm not asking you to be a perfect parent, but in the ways in which you got it wrong, understand that I was collateral damage of the ways in which you got it wrong. And parents shall have to understand that. I'm not a perfect parent. I didn't get it right all the time. Right. So you understand that there were moments in which you got it wrong. So the moments in which you got it wrong, guess what? Who has to deal with that as a battle scar, as a trauma? I do. Tamika does. And that's something that me and my mom had to battle with. Not only that, my mom dealt with the same thing. You know, she divorced my stepdad. And that became a huge thing in the way that it happened. And because I had a close relationship with my dad, a lot of times I was getting, you know, the, the lashes. I was dealing with that. And ever since I was a child, me and my mom really didn't have the best relationship because I was a child who spoke up and I wasn't the girly girl daughter. I was a tomboy. I wanted to be outside. I hung out with the boys and, you know, I had a, a head and a voice of my own and me and my mom clashed all the time, you know, because I wasn't doing the things that she wanted, you know, me to do. How she, parents have this control issue. And over time, I just realized like, yeah mom moms and dads consider to say you know i love you i know you love me but do you like me right and at the end of the day i understand that my mother does not like me and i have resolved that with myself because it's something i've known since my childhood and so to other people it's like dang you know when you say it at the end of the day whether you're in a relationship with somebody parent child friendship yeah, I might love you or whatever, but do you genuinely like me? You have to like the people around you. And I know, unfortunately, that like my mother doesn't like me. <laughs> and I had to resolve that. And and I'm okay with it. And then when I confronted my mom with it, she did exactly what Tasha's mom did, which is, I, I'm your mother. You're my child. I'm always going to love you. Right. And I asked my, I, when I have had the conversation with my mom, sorry, I'm veering off, but this is like, it triggered that, you know, and brought up that memory of me confronting my mom, like having to tell like, mom, I know you love me. Cause that's why she's like, you're my daughter. I love you. I would do anything for you. But yeah, but do you like me? And my mom, all she was like, I'm always going to love you. That's not what I said, ma. <laughs> I said, do you like me? And the fact that she couldn't even say yes or no, lets me know that I, I was right yeah you know and so everybody has especially mother and daughters like that's a very peculiar relationship to have but nonetheless i appreciate that tamika was like mama i'm putting my foot down and mom's like what does that mean and her ugly ass wig everybody knew it was the minute we you stole all that woman money and helped tasha spend it and you couldn't stop by no style these beauty supply for a different wig tasha all that money you love your mama so much i'm like oh 
Tamika disrespecting her. No, you disrespecting your mama because you not letting her know that when her jury curl is over here to the left, when it should be over here in the right bottom left, a right bottom, and her, her wig is all shifted, you being disrespectful because you supposed to honor your mother and father, and you ain't honoring your mother by letting her know she look a hot ass mess. But, <laughs> um, the mama's like, oh, you know, you, I love you. And she did the whole dramatic, come here, my child. And Tamika just cried. And I know Tamika knows that she only said that to basically put a bandaid over it. Because, yeah, you're saying you love me, but you didn't acknowledge or address none of the shit I just said. <laughs> so, basically, you tried to just manipulate me once again. And Tamika's getting old enough, you can tell. Uh, it looks like, it sounds like she's going to therapy, you know. And Tasha, y'all ass need to go to therapy too. Because not only are you getting mentally effed by your mama, but your nigga too. Let's talk about it. Um, moving on. Jalen, he tells Coco he don't want to go to school no more. She like, the devil is a lie. <laughs> you're going to take your ass to school because what? I'm paying for it. And he's like, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to make me, I, why should I suffer, you know, sacrifice my happiness to make everybody else happy and of course that is something that a lot of people you don't want that to be like oh sacrifice your own happiness but at the end of the day he's 19 you know when we're 19 I remember that feeling of like oh you know I'm grown you know I know what I want to do with my life and everything but as you get older you really start to understand how young 18 19 20 is like it's you're really just now popping out of the cocoon at 17 18 19 years old you know and i agree with coco do it on the side go to school at least have something to fall back on you know that is always something that should just always be in the back of people's mind is just having a plan b as just something and she called she like well tell your grandmother and the grandmother was like you know, I, you know, you, you do need to go to school. And all Coco keeps saying is, you know, there are so many, you know, we need black dentists, you know, and stuff like that. And I honestly do think deep down too, I hate to say it y'all. Coco, I think she feels like she might be sparing Jalen's feelings because, feelings because it's like, you don't know where you can place Jalen. Like a lot of these you know, um, record companies, these labels, they don't know where to place people like Jalen. Cause Lil Nas X wasn't, you know, the Lil Nas X that he is now until after his career popped off. Right? So we're not getting, you know, the, you know, Saucy Santana's the, the flamboyant type. He's in hip hop, but clearly Jalen looks like he's in, you know, the more R&B, you know, soul route. But that's even more hard because in typically in the R&B route, men are you know sex symbols in a way and a lot of labels are always thinking about well who's your audience gonna be and Jayla's not gonna be able to fall on the sex appeal to sell is what I'm saying and I think like Coco said her confessional I think she feels like she's trying to spare her son's feelings because she's like you know what this is a, a doggy dog world one minute they'll love you and the next minute they're tearing you down and I think she just doesn't want to see her child go through that which is understandable no parents see their child hurt but it is a part of the industry and the mom was like well just take off a year and see where you get in a year and then not go back I'll no take your ass to school on the weekend scene or when you get out of school take your ass to the studio like a lot of people do when you get out of school you go to the studio next and then you stay there and then you go back to sleep and wake up and do the shit all over again that's my that's my how i would have res resolved that but moving on okay so uh the next scene we see taj she goes to go see candy she lets candy basically know hey i seen your girl in nashville she talking about she want to go solo candy hit her with the oddish here go this bitch again. Like every time and we were sitting here wondering why, God dang, why is Tasha being so difficult? And every time Tasha starts acting difficult and starts being real, you know, passive aggressive, it's because she want to go do something solo, point blank, period. And at this point, Candy is exhausted with it because it's like we've been through this shit before. We've heard it all before. We've been here before, okay? Um, and it's like, Taj is like, well, girl, like, regardless of if Tasha is here, the, the vision has got to go on. And I appreciate Taj, like, the vision has still got to go. 
Because truth be told, y'all really could move on with Tasha. Like, and y'all really need to move on with Tasha. Period. Point blank, period. Lily, she was with her son. I think it was Kyrie or something like that. Um, he's, you know, rapper. And yeah, I love their relationship. You can tell they're super close. I can never imagine being so close to my son or daughter to the point where I'm letting them know I'm sister hot pussy. <laughs> okay. I get hot in the undergarments. Okay. I'm still trying to be out here and bust a wide open. Okay. But still wide open. Then I tell her, bring her back. And I'm hopping on the dick and they're doing a full split. Okay. Don't nobody want to tell their kid that. Like she's annoying with imagine their grandmother in the missionary position. Okay. Nobody want to imagine that. Nobody wants to imagine their mama hopping on the dick and doing a full split. Get her bike blown out. Nobody wants to imagine that. Okay. Especially a son. But I do appreciate how close their relationship is. Um, but she just lets him know, like, in this industry, I can, you know, let you know some of the people, but I ain't gonna bust the whole door open wide open for you. And that's another conversation just as a black community we need to have. Why are we struggling with nepotism? Now, I believe in nepotism to a certain extent. Like, don't just be handing off the baton to people that's not qualified, that's not showing that they're serious, nor are, you know... Really, it's about qualification and like really showing effort and dedication to, you know, the thing that you're passing on to them, because then that could tear down the whole, you know, empire. So but nonetheless, you know, there is this idea of like, I get it where it's like, if you feel like you're just constantly handing something over to somebody like one, are they going to appreciate it too? Is that really going to let them help them build their work ethic if everything literally is just put on a platter for them? But I do think that Lily could just, you know, hand him the the numbers, let him know the studio dates or whatever in which, you know, certain people are going to be there and let him run with it from there. But nonetheless, you know, Lily does talk about how, you know, when they broke up the group, you know, she was struggling. She was in her car. And in my mind, I'm just sitting here thinking, how the hell y'all been in the group that long and they save no money? How you ain't save no money, Lily? All that time? I mean, I get it. I just struggle. I ain't judging you, girl. But all that time, they save no money. Where was it going? What was what was you doing? <laughs> What's going on here, Lily? But right now, she back on her feet, and that's all that matters. And congratulations to you, Lily, because ain't nobody's immune from struggling, okay? It can hit you. One minute you up here, next minute you down. All right, y'all, moving on. So we see Tasha in the studio. The song was a bop. Which even pisses me off even more because it's like, Tasha, nobody's denying that you have a voice. Nobody's denying that you have music capability. But everybody's not effing with the fact that, girl, you got a stank-ass attitude. You got stank-ass morals. You got stank-ass character. And a whole part of being an artist is the whole package. Who gives a fuck about you being able to sing if nobody likes you? Like, I gotta like you to want to hear you singing, nonetheless. And then here go Rocky. Every time Rocky's in the scene, he's doing all this. The way his face looks just screams scammer, alert, untrustworthy, Megamind head ass. That's why I call him Megamind, turtle, turtleneck, having ass nigga. He look, just look like a turtle. Just look, just head bald, look like a thumb, milk dud, long neck, having ass, Megamind. Just scamming off of Tasha. Tasha, I really feel bad for you. Like women who are manipulative, emotionally, and mentally abusive relationships, allegedly in my opinion you could just tell like candy said he's her mind he saw her from the get-go saw that she was the insecure one of the group saw that she was the one in the group that needed to feel better and men see that and attack that and they know women like that especially feel more validated when a man is a, a part of their story and he saw tasha and was like bingo that's my lick yahtzee got him Okay, and now here it is. He's steady pushing for you to go solo so he can try to get 100%, you know, of your little solo pie. But y'all about to get 100% of nothing, okay, instead of trying to take this little 30% or something. Um, But here he come dancing and shit. She like, oh, it must be good because you dancing. Oh, keep it up, anime. Like, you can tell how Rocky really feels because in the beginning, first episode, he telling the son, you know, look what I did. You know, I mean, your mother helped, but you know, I did this. And it's like, for real? Like, Rocky ain't shit, y'all. I'm sorry you can see it. It's written all over his face. The nigga ain't shit. Point blank, period. Um, 
and he's always making a spectacle like he's always trying to just draw attention so he's sitting down talking to Tasha oh well you know what's going on do you think you and Tamika really want to make up and she must not because she bringing my name into it but you know uh I forgive her it's like nigga shut up stop trying to be godly because ain't no god anywhere in between you and Tasha period okay and he's like well are you gonna tell him she's like well you know in her confessional she's like I don't want to you know basically put the car before the horse I don't want to let them know something before the ink dry essentially um just just ask both y'all on the horse that y'all rode it in on kick rocks and open toe shoes period so we get to the end of the episode where um all the girls meet up with SWV and Tasha, I mean, girl, you love them little silver skinny jeans now. You might want to find something else with a little ruching. Why don't you just get your ass done, Tasha? You stole that money and you didn't think to inject none of it into your ass cheeks that you so insecure about. If you, because that's what she told Tasha. Oh, my sister body shamed me. She didn't body shame you. Did she take a lick? Yeah. Did she take a shot at you? Yeah. But she didn't body shame you. That was your insecurities. Like, you could tell Tasha allows her insecurities to always speak for herself. If somebody says anything that Tam dances on insecurity, now she's feeling attacked. Now I'm the victim in the situation. No, you're not always a victim, Tasha. And your mama victimizes you a lot of time when it comes to Tamika. And that's what Tamika's always feeling the way she's feeling. Like, it's just, it's just, it's just all a mess. Okay. Um, but <laughs> Candy's like, let's get right down to business. Let's get down to brass tacks. And Candy's like that because of the history of what's happened with Candy and these knuckles in the industry. And it's like, man, let's not, we're not going to just sit here and try to wait to do business on the back end. Let's handle it right now. Who going to call line? Who, I mean, who going to call, you know, who's going to headline? Are we co-listing? Uh, are we, you know, doing a headliner and an undercard? What's the team? And so SWB's like, it's one night. So let's just co-headline. I agree with that. For one night only, Candy, your ass can headline. Period. As Coco gets like, bitch, I sold 30 million records, bitch. <laughs> 30 million records. And we honestly could go back and forth and debating, like, who could headline Coco with, you know, SWV. They sold more records, but Escape has a bigger fan base currently right now, or they currently get paid more. But, oh, you know, SWV currently, like, they tour by on their own with their own, you know, headline. Um, 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 what else? What was I going to say? Sorry, my dog came in, tried to jump up on me. Um, but then it's like, you know, Escape is feeling like, especially Candy Tights, like, y'all heifers wouldn't have no show if it wasn't for me. So Candy's, I'm sure, like, I want to get paid on the on front end or the back end either way because, bitch, y'all wouldn't be here because of me. You know, Tasha, your ass need to think about that too. You want to talk about Candy, but she wouldn't be here for one for Candy. And now you're trying to capitalize on the platform that she gave your ass, okay? So you might want to shut your bitch ass up before she get to talking shit about you. <laughs> um, Okay, Hershey, I see you. Y'all, this is my little chocolate lab, Hershey. Say hi. Uh, I see you. Okay, look. Okay, all righty. Okay. See, look right. No, no, no. See? Okay, I see you. I thank you for the kiss. All right, but you got to get down. Ugh. Too big, too big, too big. Okay, get down. Thank you. Sorry, y'all. All right, this that's my cue to head out. But um, y'all, that's SWV Escape. I apologize for being late, but y'all definitely drop down in the comments and let me know how you feel about the episode. What y'all think about Tasha and her bitch ass ways, her mama, her bitch ass wig, and her freaking raggedy ass husband with his bitch ass bald head over there cheating on Tasha, talking about oh this is all for you. We gonna do it all for you. And you need to grab the mic, show them who you are. Nigga, I can't. Over there with your Ike, Ike Turner acting ass. Like, I cannot. Um, But yeah, you guys. Y'all drop down in the comments. Tell me how you feel about the episode. I am going to gonna try to go live. And let's talk about SWV Escape and a whole bunch of other subs. Tamar, Candy, all that mess. I think I'm going to go live and talk about it. So y'all stay tuned. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.